Hello, everybody, and welcome to coverage of our fourth quarterfinals for our Spring Fling Top 8. I'm Michael Hoype. I'm joined in the booth today by none other than Michael Flores. How's it going, Michael? I'm doing very well, Michael Hoype. Yep. So we have uh, a classic pre-modern matchup. We have the Goblins versus the Elves. Uh, so Red Green Goblins from Eric Hoffman with, and then up against Survival Elves for Michael Arnold. Uh, yep. You know literally nothing about this matchup. Like, I don't think you've ever no, played it no, it's, at all. It, well, I will say I wasn't playing the same version as Eric, and I'm, and my opponent was not playing the same version as Michael Arnold. So they have some tweaks on these decks that we'll touch on. They got some we'll touch weird on, but, stuff going yeah, on so in these decks. A little bit, so classic pre-modern with a little bit of funk, I guess. So, Well, to be fair, uh, weird as they might be, uh, Eric Hoffman still has the card... Uh, goblin sharpshooter in his deck and as far as i can tell <laughs> even if <laughs> even if there's some birds of paradise in this deck there are still four goblin matrons in the main yep. so yes how did, what is your experience of this matchup i kid right so you won a monthly mm -hmm. a couple monthlies back uh with goblins defeating elves in the finals is my recollection yeah so goblins in general unless i mean i don't know the technology if there's something elves can do but pretty much just has Everything. overwhelming yeah. favorite yes right? like it just on paper everything lines up really well you're both aggressive like um you have good ways of interacting with their their early drops and you have a very high power curve with that I, with that goblin sharpshooter a very good trump card i i beat um i beat goblins with elves at a meetup a few months ago my opponent was phil nguyen so a pretty capable pre-modern player and the way that i won is i just in sideboarded games i just had wall of blossoms to kind of slow them down which allowed me to uh develop you know develop my battlefield without just being completely annihilated by goblin sharpshooter but it does not look like this survival elves has got any wall of blossoms in the sideboard that's correct so i do have the the deck list up for eric right now so uh it's a little if, if you've seen the deck list it's i don't know, know what if its shape is of something or if it just looks cool but in the center it's three copies of goblin pair of birds goblin paradise birds of paradise so that is the the big difference and then here uh uh hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna just quick check we're having some tech issues where our players are not able to mute us i guess if eric if you're able to hear us it should be in whereby that you should be able to to mute uh us by the the video feed by clicking on us so you probably would have to do that both on your both forms because you have the the video one and then your phone so you probably have to do that on both of those all right so talking about these birds of paradise so i i think the general idea is just the ability to curve uh like a turn two war chief is just way better um you should gain some speed here yep so you know but the the trade-off is this deck has got five forests Mm -hmm. which is kind of a ton of forests for uh, an essentially mono-red deck. And then only three Birds of Paradise. So I'm, I'm just thinking, if I'm going to go Birds of Paradise, would you go the fourth Birds of Paradise? From a theory standpoint, I mean, I haven't done the hyper-geometric calculator, but yeah, I guess like if, if you're making that much of a concession to your mana, I feel like you would want more of the birds. Uh, I, that would be my, my inclination. So. so Yeah, let's see what happens. I mean, it, obviously, the ceiling on this is really high, right? So because... You're dramatically increasing the ability to cast a turn to Goblin War Chief, or I mean, in this matchup, Goblin Matron, or uh, even you know Goblin Sharpshooter itself on the second turn. Uh, just this matchup is going to be all about getting that Sharpshooter online quickly, kind of before the Elves player, uh, you know, establishes their game, right? So Elves deck can do a thousand damage on turn three, mm -hmm. right? So like, that's not really an exaggeration, um, but they need to kind of be able to field some one toughness creatures <laughs> yes. so, um i i i think that uh this is going to be about goblin sharpshooter uh is there a second sharpshooter in the side but there is that's typically something yes. that we see in the goblins decks yes there is uh, but you know it's also the case that the elves deck has got some unusual choices right so michael arnold's got Land of War Sentinel instead of tangle wire yes so Land of War sentinel so those are not familiar it's a Three mana, two, three. And when it comes into play, you can pay colorless and green to get another copy and put it directly into play, I believe. Yeah, so it's like a Hurloon Minotaur, but with a kicker of getting additional Hurloon Minotaur. Yes. Um, 
I am curious to talk to, to Mike Arnold about this because <laughs> um, I am not sure like what situations this is this is ideal kind of thing. I'm I'm not high on this. I'll I'll give props to Michael for for trying something new and uh, and doing well enough to to reach a topic. So, but I just don't see the benefit of this card. As yeah, good. the thing is, people people are always like, I hate Tangle Wire, you know, and so. This is taking the Tangle Wire slot. Um, if you, you hate Tangle Wire, then I guess it's better than four basic forests. Um, it's also it's fuel, right? So one of the one of the ways that elves can lose, which is not a lot of ways that elves can lose with their, their machinery online, is they just don't have another creature. And so having a creature to pitch a survival of the fittest, whatever creature it is, is beneficial. Uh, and not for nothing, um, this is multiple material, for, essentially within a single card, right? So each additional land of War Sentinel chains up, and um, it can generate multiple bodies for both uh, Gaius Cradle and for Priest of Satania because they're elves. And again, this deck can deal like a thousand damage on turn three, right? Yep. So uh, kind of the climb to get there, maybe additional bodies is is what you're looking for. Yeah, and I will note um, the omission of of deranged hermit, which I'll touch on because I think Mike Arnold had noted that in his notes. Um, that is probably the, the biggest omission, I think, because a lot of times that I, I played the the elves deck, that is just a, a great way to finish. You can really from nothing get five mana, and then if you have anger in the graveyard, you're attacking for nine with that. Yeah, one for card, nine. So, right, so uh, I've played a lot of elves, and my experience is in the games that you don't have survival of the fittest on turn two that a lot of the time your path to victory is just kind of like accelerator, accelerator, 9-9. Nine, nine. Can you stop my 9-9? Nine, nine? And oftentimes the answer is no, uh, and you just get him, get in there. Um, instead, he's got a ton of naturalize in the main deck, right? So that that obviously is a huge edge in matchups like Parfait or uh, Mono Blue 12-12, where... Uh, the ability to cast a naturalize on a Mox Diamond, Land Tax, or a Phyrexian Dreadnought is a capability that is pretty good in general, but just something that you might not necessarily expect out of the Elves deck in Game 1, so it might get an additional edge. Uh, naturalize is going to be the first card that gets sided out in this matchup, though. I don't think there's a single relevant card in, in the Goblins main deck where that's going to matter. Yep, I'll agree there, yep. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to jump over to our player slides. Uh, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about what uh, our players had talked about when they filled out the top eight. So um, I'm just trying to, I'm keeping track of our players. I think they're having some tech issues right now, so I'm monitoring that as well. But uh, we have Eric Hoffman out of Galesburg, Illinois. He had a record of seven and one, took the three seed in the top eight, playing, like we said, the, the Red Green Goblins with the, the innovation take of, of using the Birds of Paradise. So... Uh, he says that the Goblins deck is favored versus fair decks, which I I think in general is a pretty good thing. Like the Goblins are nice that you have that explosive power of being able to play a Goblin Lackey for that unfair game, but then also you do a very good job of against a control deck if you're casting ringleaders and matrons and kind of have built-in card advantage to build up a board presence. So would would you agree that it's favored against like red deck wins or the rock? I would not uh, say it's favored against red deck wins. Uh, I think the the rock matchup is pretty close. Uh, so, I, I I lost to goblins recently at a meetup uh, playing Flint's red deck wins because he tricked me. Okay. And um, the card goblin patrol is really bad in this matchup because <laughs> it, it turns on uh, opposing Gem Palm Incinerator. Right. <laughs> like, oftentimes they just can't deploy their stuff because sure. you have like you play a first turn uh, Grim Lava Mancer or something. So like oh I, I they have to kind of slow play. But then you're like, all right, Goblin Patrol. And they're like, sweet, cycle, kill your, kill your Grim Lava Mancer. It's on! <laughs> okay. Uh, so then he says the deck struggles with things that can ignore, ignore either the swarm or have a lot of hate. Uh, so if if they you're good against go wide strategies, uh, then you're in, in pretty good condition. Or if you um, have hate, which I guess I would consider engineered plagues, um, I mean, maybe cards like chill or whatnot. I, that depends, because I mean, a lot of times the way the, the game is very different if, if they have a chill or not. Um, and well, then, you're zero mana for your creatures, though. Yes, if you have a lackey. So, I mean, if, if you have the lackey, then things are usually pr going pretty well. So, uh, 
sorry, I'm distracted by adjusting things. I think our players are figuring out things, and I have to adjust my layout before we jump down to the match. But interesting sideboard choices on the part of Eric, right? Like one of the big draws to the red green version of goblins is naturalize, and Eric has gone so far as to play five forests instead of one forest for main deck birds of paradise but there is not a naturalized in the 75 that i can see is that is that accurate uh i didn't realize that and i guess i was surprised if he didn't have i'm gonna pull up the text deck list because i thought he had naturalized all right the players have figured out their sound issues so uh so looking at i'm looking for naturalize there's hull breach uh, and train not naturalized. Okay, so, so Neither not one of those is naturalized. Yeah. So uh, Hull Breach, I mean, it doesn't matter in this matchup, but notably Hull Breach can be blue blasted. Okay. Uh, and Tranquil Domain does not kill a 12-12, which is one of the main things that you need to you need to naturalize for. Neither of which matters in this today. But mm. I just thought it was interesting that you would go so deeply into green, uh, you know, for those Birds of Paradise and literally 500% the normal number of basic forests in your deck and not have, you know, really kind of what the draw card is. Sure. Okay. Uh, he talked about the cyborg cards. The MVP, he said, was Tranquil Domain. So he really liked that against um, a lot of the matchups he faced. And then he said he might swap one of the Hull Breaches for a third copy of Tranquil Domain. So he's been impressed with that card. I uh, guess he didn't need the, the Naturalize, but Tranquil Domain has been a, a key player. Uh, speaking of the sideboard, I think that from Eric's side, we're going to see Pyrokinesis come in. That's a big play. Uh, and I don't think anything else is... Oh, and of course, the third, uh, the, the, the additional Goblin Sharpshooter. I think those are going to be the key things that come in uh, in sideboard of games. Um, then we want to talk about Mike Arnold's Elves sideboard. Yeah, I, I quick have a quick things about Eric that he noted. He said he played Goblins because they're punchy, flexible, and can grind out long games. He said this list features Birds of Paradise to maximize best draws and a way to solve the turn two issue. I guess the turn two issue being that goblins don't have a lot of impactful plays on turn two, and so I guess trying to skip that is what he's going for. Uh, One, he, two, no haste, go is not... That's not a sexy play to you? Uh, I mean, the... I think it's fine just to cast your pile driver like on turn like six or seven a lot of times. Like, you don't really need it on turn two, so um, I'd find doing other things on turn two, like... I like Rishon and Fort as an example, but oh, that's an interesting turn two play, Rishon yeah. and Fort. Yeah. How many Rishon and Ports are in this deck? There, I don't think he has any. So, um, <laughs> but th I'm just talking about my version. Yeah. He he has there... Ancient Tomb, so he's trying to just skip that that turn and go. Did up. you play Ancient Tomb in your deck? Yes, I had four Ancient Tomb and or three Ancient Tomb and four Rishon and Port. Yeah, I think Ancient Tomb's very good in Goblins, but uh, he has to change his mana base to accommodate all those forests. Yes, that's yes. the. That's the thing here. And he's uh, removing colorless lands to do so. Yep. He One asked, would you make any changes to the deck? He says, I haven't yet boarded in the experimental compost. So maybe that for a pyroblast. So I know a lot of times you look at those like really powerful cyborg cards and you're like, oh, I'm going to get them with this compost. And then they're like, yeah, I would just rather have this be like kind of like a, a just another copy that I like know a, I'm going to use. A so. card of a, that I would definitely use. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are two hull bridges in the main deck of this goblins deck. Okay, I so, didn't realize that. So that's something. Uh, okay. th that's going to be so, sort of interesting. It's going to give Eric interaction against the card Survival of the Fittest, potentially in Gastacore. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump through. We're going to talk about Mike Arnold real quick. So he's from Temucla, I don't even, Temucla, California. He had a 6-2 and two record, finished the 6th seed. Uh, so he's playing the Survival Elves with the changes that we already highlighted he says it's favored against most mid-range and control decks because of my mana and card advantage engines, uh, but struggles against fast combo and red base decks with a lot of removal. So, unfortunately, today he's playing against a deck that has main deck goblin sharpshooter and like I don't know fifteen ways to find it in game yep. one and, and general uh, incinerators and mog fanatics. So I think that and qualifies. And sideboarding, yep. pyrokinesis. Pyro like this is this is going to be a tough. Tough climb for elves. Yeah. Uh, but notably, he has main deck elvish champion and additional sideboard elvish champion. And elvish champion in play basically means that Goblin Sharpshooter won't sing singularly ruin him, right? Mm -hmm. Still has text. You can set stuff up, including just getting rid 
of the champion itself. And then, then that unlocks Goblin Sharpshooter. So for those who are not familiar with Goblin Sharpshooter, uh, it's a goblin that it's like a Tim, prodigal sorcerer type. It taps to deal one point of damage. If a creature dies, then it untaps immediately. So imagine you're playing against a deck that has, oh, I don't know, four Priests of Titania, four Findhorn Elf, four <laughs> Landwar Elf, four Kyrian Ranger, four Multani's Acolyte, four Wirewood Symbiote. Uh, you just tap it once and you're basically nearly guaranteed to kill every creature on the other side of the battlefield and still end up with a Tim that can tap and hit base. Yeah, can just right? do it again, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, this is a very bad card if it ever resolves in the Elves versus Goblins matchup. If you're the Elves player, it is literally the card that the Goblins deck wants to see. If they're able to untap with that card or it's given haste as a result of Goblin Warchief, the Goblins deck is just overwhelmingly favored to win that game. All right. Um, I'm ready to jump down the match. Uh, I will tell them to start. Then. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. On our left, we have Eric Hoffman with the Red Green Goblins deck. And then on the right is Mike Arnold. Uh, so Eric was the higher seed. So... He gets to choose to play. He will do that. And I'm going to adjust some things on the layout real quick. Or begin. Okay. And we're off with the Wooded Foothills. So First can, turn. Will first turn a, damaging himself. Will it be a forest or will it be a mountain? Well, I think we're, we're going to find out what his first turn play is, depending on which one it is. Oh, okay. Birds of Paradise in the house. <laughs> Did... Uh, did Eric keep seven cards? It looks like he kept seven cards as well. I didn't see you before, uh, before we jumped over. So First Hurt Accelerator on the play is so bad for Mike Arnold. Maybe he's just like Josh. It wasn't just Josh. And, uh, new bordered Ravnica City of Guilds, Birds mm -hmm. of Paradise, notably. Can't say that Brian Manalakos would approve of that. <laughs> I will say the one thing that's nice about the birds is it makes it very smooth if you have like a goblin matron just to like that consistent, like got, get that goblin sharpshooter on like one turn earlier and uh, online. And we might see that out of Eric. And I would definitely <laughs> like, okay, that's what we said. Oh, goblin matron. <laughs> so bad. So if you don't know what a goblin matron does, it's a demonic tutor for goblins uh, that is. Also a 1-1 creature. So it's itself a goblin, so it can be deployed by... Interesting. I did, I did not expect that choice, right? So among other things, Eric can't cast the Siege Gang Commander. Uh, well, there, there could be an Ancient Tomb. That, that could be in the hand. Oh, um, fair enough. It could be that he already has a... Sharpshooter if he already had a Sharpshooter, it would be in play right now. Oh, that's true. that's true. There's no... There's no um, there's no line that the elves that can take that would prevent the sharpshooter from killing the land of world. Yeah. At this at this stage in the game. So uh this is literally a duel of wooded foothills v wooded foothills. <laughs> it is a duel of basic forest and basic mountain against basic mountain and basic forest. Yeah. Uh and Mike Mike Arnold in the tank is now gonna put himself to 18 life. So a race to the bottom, really, if you think about it. Who can deal the most damage to themselves? Uh, survival of the fittest is about the best play you can have in this spot, but it's not like it's good, right? So, um, oh, came to play. <laughs> well, I would say a lot of times the explosive draws with survival of the fittest, you need to have an anger in the graveyard for the elves deck, and so having that mountain is really important. It is a little bit awkward that you like don't have additional green mana to use the survival activation for yeah, those like I... combos, but uh, really important to have the mountain. I would predict Mike Arnold probably only had Wooded Foothills for lands because that mountain is a terrible... It's not that it's the wrong play. It's like it is a terrible concession at this stage of the game, right? Because he's going to have to go through his deck to find Squee and Anger. Okay. Uh, and the mountain obviously does not search with Survival of the Fittest. Um, so, I mean, the best play is to somehow get Engastacore in play and then somehow be able to limit Eric's Siege Gang Commander. If he can get Ngastikor in play and then kill the Siege Gang Commander, which he's not going to be able to do this turn, right? So this is... Uh, well, I'm trying to think, like, if you're, like, getting Anger and Priest of Titania, I mean, I, it might be theoretically possible. Anger Priest is... Uh, you have to And then a Kirin Ranger. One. You can get a lot of mana. So... First search has to get anger, right? Sure. 
I mean, this this would be a lot easier if you had a Gaia's Cradle. Yeah, so, <laughs> okay, so first one, if this... Other Claws discard, if you go get Anger, then you use another green to go get Priest, discarding the Anger. Then you tap a Elf, or you're getting Squee. Because if you tapped an Elf and a Mountain to play the Priest, then you'd have three mana with that. You could tap that... For three. Then go get a Presuming you had Ranger. another creature, you sure, get Creator sure. Ranger. On, no, 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 no. What you want is Symbiote. Symbi Symbiote. That, well, that yeah, would guarantee because, that you have another elf. Yeah, because you need another, another creature, creature to yep. put to your hand. And then you need to Symbiote again on the opponent's turn. Uh, because there's not enough mana to do all of it on our turn, right? Uh, if, if You'd be able to cast a Master Core this turn. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But you would need to be able to use the ability again on the opponent's turn. Um, you can do um, that with a Kirin Ranger. You have two forests. If you ha That's assuming he has the, the other creature to discard. But... So just casting a Kyrian Ranger, tapping for attacking? No, tapping for G, activating Kyrian Ranger, un, presumably untapping one of these two elves. He's played a land already this turn, right? Yes. And that's a Multani's Acolyte. Um, okay. Do you think Eric erred by just not getting? Uh, Goblin I, Sharpshooter? Yeah, like, I, does he have does he have War Chief Sharpshooter in hand? Like I'm trying to think about like why you would not have gotten Sharpshooter. Although it's possible that Sharpshooter could have died to the right draw, but you need War Chief and Sharpshooter this turn in order to justify having gotten that instead of um, Siege I mean, Gang Commander. I mean, Siege Gang does some work here. Killing two of the creatures is is good. Yeah, use four mana and essentially two creatures to kill two creatures that cost two mana against a deck that is has a survival engine online. So I've been on the red side of this matchup a bunch, and everyone talks about how the red side always wins. If you let the opponent untap with the survival engine in play, you're like, you're playing with matches. Uh, well, Skirk Prospector changes this because it allows... It allows open Eric up opportunities to really destroy the board here. To generate more mana, yeah. but without a goblin sharpshooter in play, it's not okay. Maybe he, maybe his last play is just going to be a sequence where he sacrifices two goblins in order to, to just play a sharpshooter he already had. In which case, the game is over. Um, but if it's any play but that, all right. Here comes R from. Okay, this is R from Skirk Prospector. Uh, okay, so this, uh, this matron can go get a sharpshooter, right? Okay. Yeah, this is, this is game over now. Right, so... Um, and Mark Mike Arnold's saying don't even go through the motions. Just for folks at home, what was about to happen was Eric was going to search for Goblin Sharpshooter using Goblin Matron uh, and then sacrifice some of the goblins in play in order to make red mana. Goblin Sharpshooter would cost only two as a result of the Goblin Warchief being in play and would have haste for the same reason. Uh, and what is... We were pulling out a duelist and talking about Gaia's Cradle and Deranged Trivet. I don't know if... I don't know if this is like a solid uh, dig at, at Mike Arnold saying that he's not... I'm like not, so maybe we should ask Eric if there's a Mike Flores column in that uh, episode of The Duelist. Because I used to write for the paper Duelist, I think, during that era. Okay. So... So we should, we should probably ask them. Just, we'll we'll just ask him afterwards what, what that reference was. If, so. if, if there was a... Oh, no. That's clearly he's making fun of him for not having Deranged Hermit. <laughs> but Deranged Hermit would not have helped in that situation. No, right. No. So I think, like, the justification was Eric had multiple copies of Goblin Matron and that if you have a Skirk Prospector, then CGN Commander is kind of, like, weirdly mana positive. Mm -hmm. Uh just as a result of being able to sacrifice goblin tokens for R and then under Goblin War Chief, you know, you have multiple discounts going on at the same time. Okay, Mike Arnold. So is this a best best of five yes. sideboard after game two? Yeah, so best of five, okay. yeah. We don't have access to the sideboard for this game two. So everything stays the same. Um, I still like the goblins in this matchup. I, I mean it's gonna revolve around Goblin Sharpshooter and how quickly can you get that into play? I mean, there are definitely draws where Mike is going to be able to outpace that. 
they have to yeah, be good. I mean, I think going first is just an enormous is this enormous benefit, right? Like if he goes like first turn elf, like you know, second turn two elves, third turn like survival priest, uh, you know, symbiote or or uh Kyrian Ranger, uh he just potent is with a guy's cradle on turn three, he's potentially win the game on the spot. It's funny that Eric has Goblin Lackey here, and I think this is like one of the matchups where you'd probably prefer to have a Mog Fanatic compared to a Goblin Lackey. Uh, just being able to take out that Mana Elf, I think, would be a lot better than just the idea of, of having a Lackey. All right, so... I like... I mean, as much as you can like Mike Arnold's position, I like Mike Arnold's position. Um, he's probably just going to try to block that Goblin Lackey with the Curian Ranger. Yeah, well, with oh, the Finhorn Elves. Un okay. Untapping the Finhorn Elves? Yeah, that okay. makes sense. Yep, I like that. Uh, it depends if he has additional forests in hand. If he has additional forests in hand, I'm not sure if that's better, but, uh, you know, the Land of War Elf does something by itself. The Curian Ranger doesn't. I mean, well, the Curian Ranger with a Priest of Titanium play. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty minor additional amount of mana, right, at this stage? Uh, I mean, it's... It's one more mana each activation, and that's with not any with without any more elves. I, I agree. I'm just saying it is. It's just not like a huge amount of yeah. additional value. So there is Goblin Matron going for the Goblin Sharpshooter uh, here on turn two as a result of Ancient Tomb Ancient tapping Tomb. for two. Doing a lot of work. So here, yeah, and and this is where like that one turn of difference I think could really be a huge factor. I mean, I don't know if there's a survival fitness here, but. Um, it's not just mono survival that is good here. Well, okay, there is a survival. But um, there's a lot of cards that actually have a lot of text in this situation. Uh, for example, Masticore is the is the huge... Mm -hmm. If you get Masticore, then you can overwhelm uh, the the Goblin Sharpshooter pretty easily. But there's there's other cards that, that are potentially valuable, in, even in a game with situation. Just Elvish Champion would be, would be yeah. enough. And and given that like Mike has like a gazillion mana, <laughs> so with two priests of Titania and a Kieran Ranger, uh, he has a lot of activations of survival. Can pump out a Masticor like this. The Sharpshooter cannot come down because it it will just die if it doesn't have haste. I would take this hit from the Goblin Matron. I don't know about you, yeah, but those yeah. elves are way more valuable yes, than yes, a well, Goblin really. Matron that's already done her job. Sorry, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Koi Pai, you doing? Are you playing a lot of volleyball? Is it the season yet? Yes, uh, we have. I'm right in between my spring season ending and then summer volleyball starting, so we're starting to play outdoor volleyball. It's getting warm enough in Wisconsin. All right, so Hull Breach has been aimed at presumably survival of the fittest. Okay. Uh, Mike Arnold has responded by producing three mana using Kyrian Ranger to return Forest to hand. Uh, and we're probably going to... So pitching Boltani's Act Light, we're probably going to see Squee and Anger as the next two consumption of g uh you might not get squee in this situation because if you don't have a survival then like you don't need that like value chain or you do because that's what he just did okay <laughs> uh i disagree with you dramatically because if your goal is to get uh masticore then even without a survival of the fittest that's squee is a free upkeep for masticore yeah so this is a great board position if you have a masticore um to well, then there there we go. You can cast the Masticore and upkeep it with the Squee and very easily uh, gun down everything in the Goblin deck at this stage. I think it's I think it's gonna be the reverse of game one, where basically uh, Masticore plus Squee is gonna rule the battlefield. Uh, the upkeep on it is basically free, and Eric's gonna have to Eric's gonna have to two spell. Uh, just to keep his guys alive. Yeah, I'm trying to think like what situation he would need to do. It, it would involve Mike not having a mana, which is not. Well, but that's happen. not going to happen, right? Yeah. So, and, and then I don't, I don't even know what you do. Like, try and get a siege gang and then jump home. Oh, look at how greedy he is! <laughs> Taps for three, makes Multani's act like if, if that was going to be your line, you shouldn't have played your land. Actually, what if he had drawn into Gaia's cradle? Yeah. I bet he drew to guys' credits like, oh, shoot, I can't believe I, <laughs> can't believe I played that. Uh, just going to burn mana to kill Matron here. Yep, that's a good play. And then 
anger. Yes, thanks to anger. All of them boys has haste. Uh, this game is over. Yes. <laughs> uh, sorry, Eric fans. Uh, Masticor stands have got this one. So the difference between the game ones and the sideboarded games, so telling because if Mike Arnold had had the exact same draw in a sideboarded game, he would just have no permanence in play right now. <laughs> so <laughs> Pyrokinesis would have killed all of those elves sure. uh, and he'd have like a mountain in play. Taking three damage to cast a war chief. And then there's a uh, the sharpshooter, but... But uh, it doesn't matter. So in response yeah. to the sharpshooter, he's just going to untap kill the, and kill the war chief. Kill the war chief. Four mana, two shots. Yep, and that's enough for Eric. Yep. Yeah, so like I said, you needed two spells just to keep your guys alive, but against two priests. Man, maybe I'm just going to play elves at Lobster Gone. <laughs> 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 it certainly would be a good choice. I would not I, fault anyone for that. I had uh, I had uh, my one of my apprentices... Pog and Lanny did a playtest session and I had them tape it. And just whatever deck Lanny was playing, that's just the deck I wanted to play. Like after <laughs> I was I love elves again. Elves is awesome, right? And then I love 1212. Why did I throw 1212 into the bin? Uh, but as you know, as probably all the fans of the Cloud Goat Ranger channel know, I have to play whatever Flint says because I lost the <laughs> <it> bet. <laughs> that's true. So I've been slightly trying to influence him on, on what he's gonna making do. me play the rock. No, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, just the rock. I think is a defensible choice this year. It was not a defensible choice last year, but I think this year it kind of is. See, we were trying to think of like if if we made you play a completely new deck, because then if like if you don't do well, then you can just blame Flint. But then you do well, and then you get your name to the the fancy new deck, and then you get to bring it to all the glory. So Flint Flint tricked the hell out of me, right? So he's like, you know, he he had won the monthly, and then. Hurst, like, they have like a combined like twenty and one record with Flint's red red deck, right? Sure. So they send me all these changes, and these changes make zero sense. Like you look at this, and it was like, why would I do any of these things? And Flint's just like, just just make these changes. So he like removes all of the cards that are hitters in the deck. Like he removes Ball Lightning and Curse Scroll. You know, games that you would you know, need to be able to win, you might need to have a card that does some damage, or maybe gives you some staying power, and he just added three lands in a Goblin Patrol. <laughs> but your curve is one! Why are we adding land? Right? So, you just just do it, right? <laughs> so, obviously, I went two and two, and, I'm, <laughs> and I lost to Goblins, because there's extra Goblin Patrol in my deck, and I was just, like, lost with three Mistress Factories in play. So, I'm like, Flint, what's going on, brother? And he's just like, I was multitasking. That was his <laughs> answer! Don't listen to me. I was multitasking. Does that put a lot of faith for for your uh, deck choice that you had to play for LobsterCon? <laughs> no, oh man, I I'm gonna be dialed. This isn't just gonna be like some random Tuesday meetup up in New York City. I play those every week. I'm gonna be dialed in. This is the North American Pre Modern Championships. I got to do better than I did last year. I did pretty well last yes, year. Yes, yes, you did. That's for sure. I All need right. to redeem. I re need to redeem myself, like Mike Arnold did in Game Two, because that was a spectacular comeback after. The, the browning, the sizzling, the broiling, the boiling we saw in game one. I do want to look at Mike Arnold's sideboard, and there is a card that we did not mention, and something that I'm not familiar with in Elf sideboard is Bounty of the Hunt. So the, the pitch card, it's no force of will, but it might be a way to fight against Goblin Sharpshooter. Is that is that something you think that Mike is going to That sounds awful. Awful? <laughs> Yeah, it's horrible. Okay, so, um, I mean, just for purpose of fighting Goblin Trip, I have no opinion about it as, like, a racer card. So it's like a distributable giant growth, right, for zero yes. mana. That's yep. cool. Um, I don't know about giant growth for two cards, but sure, that's a thing that you might want to do in some matchups if you needed to get faster, for example. But if you're playing against a Goblin Sharpshooter and you're using Bounty of the Hunt, what if they just, like, I don't know, like, sacrifice a, a Goblin to... Skirk Prospector or Tingu to the face with a Mog Fanatic, then they get an untap and they kill your guy in response. Okay. So then you would say, well, I just wouldn't use Bounty of the Hunt. Like, okay, then just don't have Bounty of the Hunt. <laughs> what if what if you're using it as a way to fight Pyrokinesis? <sighs> that is kind of cool. I could buy that. I mean, that seems real edge case to me, though. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you're... So Bounty of the Hunt's three, right? And Pyrokinesis is four? Uh, three counters, yes. Distributed. Yeah. Yep. I mean, maybe? It depends how bad the pyrokinesis was going to be. 
Yeah. So uh, it seems to me like a great way to fight Pyroclasm. Yeah. I'd buy that. Yeah. Right. But Pyrokinesis, I don't know about. I think if you're going to do any of the things that you've described, I think I might just want more Elvish champions. This deck also doesn't have infinite card advantage. It, this card advantage is a single red card. So when people compare like land tax and survival of the fittest and pre mod, and they're like, why do you why do you hate land tax so much? Survival of the fittest is the same thing. Like, survival of the fittest draws one extra card a turn, and it's a squee. There's a second squee <laughs> in the sideboard, so he can at least get two. If he's, he's not going to have a second, squee. this is not a this is not a matchup about how how long I can grind you out and draw additional one one creatures. I could have one one creatures I can cast and one one creatures that I'll never want to cast. Uh, any one one creatures are bad, right? You need speed. And they're not bad. Like, obviously, they're his engine. But he needs speed. He needs to close. He needs to hammer to the face. Maybe he's going to bounty the hunt on the play on offense. Probably not still. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just don't think the ability to draw an additional card of Squee is, is going to defeat an opponent with Goblin Sharpshooter when that opponent could kill all of your creatures in one blow. A better question is if Mike Arnold brought his Gar Goblin Sharpshooter in. I think he probably did. Yeah, I, I think that is probably typically something you do. All right, so we are kicking off game three. Uh, Eric had a mountain and a pass, while Mike Arnold has a turn one Lanaro. So mountain, oh, well, second turn Ancient Tomb. Deal two to myself. In return, I'm going to get a Goblin Sharpshooter that's going to be deployable on, uh, on turn three. Yeah, there it is. All right, so we're still, this, all these games are still about Sharpshooters, so. I mean, what if Mike Arnold's just like Wooded Foothills Goblin Sharpshooter? Right? That would be... That would be really good. That would be fancy pants. Pants would be so fancy. I mean, this is one of those... Oh, boy. Ooh. Oh, boy. How about an Elvis champion? That is the defense. You know, like in Karate Kid 1, when Daniel-san sees Mr. Miyagi doing the crane technique on, like, the pillars in the sea, and he's just like... If do correctly, no can defense. <laughs> he probably said if do correct. I'm not sure if he had a strong concept of American <laughs> adverbs. But, uh, you know, no can defense. So Eric's just like, oh boy. Are those tutus? <laughs> what if I just had a pyrokinesis here? <laughs> a pyrokinesis would be a disaster for Mike Arnold. Uh, that, would be, that would be good. But, but what if he has bounty of the that would be that would <laughs> the ultimate point. That would be more twists and turns than the typical season of twenty four. Yes. <laughs> uh, who would say like she's on whose side now? <laughs> All right. Four mana. Ringleader, are we thinking? A war chief. Okay. War chief go. Would you have sent your war chief there? Mm, probably. Yeah, for sure, right? Right. Uh, like, no, because you could you could trade like Kyrian Ranger, I don't think I would want to trade it with a Lana Reynolds. But what if what if you had your own bounty though? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like touche. My war chief is secretly five five. This does right. kind of like make Mike play a little different, like with the the war chief in play. Yeah, if, haste. If, yeah, if this this champion like goes away, which could just be from like if a Mog fanatic, a Gem Palm Incinerator, Pyrokinesis. Like any of those, and then the House of Cards is just is so. All what is on the this text Elvis on champion. Elvish Champion? I think it's all, all elves. other elves get plus one plus one and Forest Walk. Yeah, so Forest Walk's pretty good in a matchup where the opponent mono red deck has five forests sure. and four wooded foothills. Yeah, it's, so, it's not something that Eric can play around as much that most most red green goblin players would be able to. Yeah, this is like. There's actually a very interesting additional amount of text on Elvish Champion. Um, it's in the tank. I mean, this is such a situation where you would just want to have Deranged Hermit. <laughs> I would just feel like Deranged Hermit right here. Well, they don't have, there's no anger yet. So. But, oh, you're right. There's no yeah. anger. But I would still attack with it and see if. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mike Arnold has convinced me to play Elves at LobsterCon. I mean, if it were my choice, which it's not. <laughs> second, second Cradle! <laughs> oh, yeah. man! Are we going to see the Sentinel Brigade? <laughs> that would, that would, here would be a spot, like... This would be a spot where the Sentinels would, you know, have some... 
I love it. I thought this was going to be a raffle stop in favor of Goblins. This looks to me like Mike Arnold's going to win the game. And probably it's not going to be difficult. (laughs) Right? So uh, here you tap for... um, There's mana floating probably from the previous cradle. Um, You tap for at least four here. Uh, Go get... Go get... um, Yavamaya Granger, Mountain, and Anger. And then basically the game is over. Uh, Because what has to happen is that Eric has to win the next turn. Mm -hmm. Or he's going to get overrun by haste. And that haste can include... Oh, I don't know. Priest of Titania Kamal. Priest of Titania Kamal is the route that you take to deal like a thousand damage in one turn, right? Yeah, so yep. uh, you you utilize Kamal uh, to continually make a. Well, let's see. I will also say uh, Kamal of Croja plus animating a Gaius Cradle is pretty good with a Kieran Ranger in play. Well, yeah, so that's how you do it with yep. with you know you you keep tapping on tapping it, make a bazillion manas. Uh, all these elves are three three, but if there's Pyrokinesis, okay, Incinerator for three take out one of the Elvis so champions. You, yeah, because you can you can deal one to the <laughs> Elvis champion, take out the other Elvis champion, and then ping the Elvis champion, then take everything else out, right? Uh yeah, so because they're both Elvis champions are three threes. So you deal well, one. So two, now it's the two two, right? So uh well wouldn't you have Goblin Sharpshooter the other Elvis oh. champion first? Well the the... And then get an untap from the gem palm incinerator. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's I think what happened. So. Oh well. I guess goblin sharpshooter even beats two elvish champions. I I thought Mike was out of the woods there with the the second one, thinking that like this is a, a situation where, okay, your house of cards is not so frail, but. Wait. Yeah, I mean, what's his best play? Yep. Collar of the claw. That's not even good against this battlefield. He'll get four tokens, but those tokens are. Huh? I mean, it's the tokens are good with with guys cradle. Yeah, so he only gets two tokens because yep. uh, Eric, I think, wisely passed instead of just gunning the other two guys. Yeah, he... yeah, that makes sense. Well, the mana was floating, so he's probably just going to the, the next phase, and then it was going to shoot him then. So yeah, that, that was yeah, the... yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like yeah. you know, I, I think that some people would just be liable to. Yep. I agree. Kill those other elves because then you get it's like you get a faster free untap, but yeah, that was a, nice uh, was a very wise tight, play. Tight, tight little play, yeah. Um, what are we going for here? Discarding Squee. So, I mean, there's a good amount of there's at least three mana from Well he'll have four mana. If he has like an additional cradle, he can play in Gastacore. Uh, oh, he can't actually. There's no route to being able. He has two cradles. I'm trying to think about how you could actually execute this. I think his plan but... is probably play Master Core, <laughs> shoot Sharpshooter, and then, then you not can... enough mana. Well, he has four. He has four. He have another cradle? I don't know. Yeah, you need to have a second cradle. That's the only way to do it. I mean, he. I mean, Platon Gastacore Go is not that bad, actually. It's not good. Don't get me wrong, but it's not that bad. It looks it looks like that. What is kind of the situation he's in? So, like this board is like incredibly dead to a second sharpshooter. I can't believe. I thought. I thought he was out of the woods on double Elvis champion, but mm-hmm. I was. I was foolhardy on that. On that decision. Conclusion. Well, I mean, ooh, a Mog Fanatic. A Mog Fanatic's enough. Or Prospector. Okay, that That's... probably that might be better. No, it's not better. Uh, oh, I guess that that just trades one for one. Yeah. Right, and then you've traded, and they still have an Engastacore, and Engastacore is going to kill your Sharpshooter. Oh, you. I mean, you can kill the Mastercore with the uh, Sharpshooter, sack the Matron, and the Skirt Prospector, right? Uh, let's see. One damage to sharpshooter. Oh, that's yeah. enough, actually. This makes it easy. <laughs> yep. So, Gem Palm Incinerator cycle sees four goblins in play. Uh, the goblins will kill Ngastacore. GG. That was a swinging game. <laughs> that was more twists and turns than the letter S. 
I'm enjoying this match a ton. Yeah, it's. I mean, we talked about it being a blowout, and I feel like each game there's been a pivotal point where Mike can just almost just turn the corner and just roll over the goblin stick. If Mike had gone first, do you think he would have won that game? I think so, right? Yeah. I, I think so. You know, that violates the Mike <laughs> Flores assessment of pre-modern that going first is far less descriptive of who wins than in many other formats. Have you so, played a lot with the Elves deck? I played it in one I played it in one large tournament. I played it in a thousand dollar tournament, which I'm gonna say that I won, but we, I did a four way split sure. uh, in the top four with uh, Mano and like two other players. I can't remember off the top of my head. One of them's probably like a famous pre modern podcaster, but not famous to me. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but and with Mano, so um, and so here's the thing. I, I so I got there to the top four, and Mano was in the top four. This is like while we were in PSS, right? So it's like. I think I'd only lost once. You know, I eventually lost 15 times or something in PSS. But I think at that point, I'd only lost once. Uh, but Flint had told me to... Is there swearing on this stream or no? You there's... can swear. Okay. So Flint told me to, quote, stop fucking around and play a real deck. Because <laughs> it's a thousand dollars. So I played elves. And then I easily made the top eight. And then I made the top four. So I said, let's split the top four. Because my top four matchup was going to be The Rock. And it's not like I have a lot of respect for The Rock, but he had like two main deck engineered plagues and two okay. sideboard engineered plagues. Okay. And I had not yet listened to the podcast that Ole did describing how you always beat The Rock. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how many engineered plagues they have. And then like, if I had listened to that podcast, I, I would have just played to the final. Because I, I played this with Mano, and he was playing Dreadnought, and I beat him in testing like a ton. So I assume Rano would have won his top four matchup. And then um, I would have, I if I had listened to that podcast, then I would have known how to beat uh, four engineered plagues in play, which is apparently really easy. Uh, all you do is just like have a survival and then you survival for anger and then you lyrist their, you like lyrist all their engineered plagues. Yeah. And then you just, they're the rocks so they haven't killed you. You have like seven land in play and you're just like, all right, here's my turn. And like, that was a thousand damage. It certainly was. Yes, it was. We're like, in response, there's no response. I'm I'm gonna animate this guy's cradle and untap it three times. Do you know how much mana that is? Neither do I, but it's more <laughs> than you can do. I think like Fluffy and Ollie were talking about like their record of how much damage they did in the third turn. I think Fluffy got three thousand damage once. On the third that's, turn? On oh. the third turn. Like, that's a lot. You know? So I'm like, Ugh. I mean a thousand damage is a lot. Like, yes. like, <laughs> Just being able to do it that quickly also is pretty impressive. Yeah, so it's, it's insane. I mean, this is a deck of finite resources. It's not like you're playing Devourer or something, which has like an infinitely repeatable action. Mm -hmm. Like you're just talking about untapping a guy's <laughs> Yeah. But like over the course of time, you're like putting more drainage tournaments in play and, you know, whatever else. Nonsense. All right, we got... Mana accelerators, I don't know, that's in quotes. We got well, Clear Ranger facing off of Birds of Paradise. I mean, of the range of keepable hands, I think that's the weakest possible hand for Mike Arnold's side. Okay, yeah, it, not being it, able to accelerate, I guess, like, yeah. in that normal, natural yeah, way. Yeah, it's a survival. Um, Birds of Paradise, Basic Forest, what are we going to say? So that was just a straight-up Basic Forest, right? Yes. If you're, if you're at Lobster Con and your opponent goes, up, uh, well... But it was a nice match. <laughs> the quick sharpshooter uh, is going to be problematic for Mike. So, well, the, so natural forest birds of paradise, natural mountain sharpshooter. Yeah, there's uh, two. There's two of them now. So, yeah, I mean, there's just no way out here. You're not blocking with the the sharpshooter here. No, I mean, there's just no way out. I, I don't like the only cards that are good in this situation are cards like cursed totem. Which are not very good when you're elves. Yeah. <laughs> you need your and you need your cards to be able to tap, right? So, Mike Arnold has obtained a Yavamaya Granger, which is both a two-two creature and naturally card advantageous. Uh, seems like a pretty good play. Um, Sharpshooter is going to take out Kyrian Ranger before. Uh, I don't even know if he drew yet. <laughs> Just like. Up Siege Gang Commander! Mm -hmm. um, man, those Birds of Paradise are looking fantastic. I think <laughs> I'm playing Goblins at Lobster Con. <laughs> and I'm going to play exactly three Birds of Paradise. It, it, this it, seems it great. Well for Eric, so. Uh, so, no upkeep. No upkeep on that guy. Let him die. I mean, oh. you know, it gets on tap. Having the Mountain what? is 
an out, but it's against an active sharpshooter. What I think are you going to do? Need like to get a get a sharpshooter is to get rid of. I think that's step one. Like I mean, own. if neither so. If Eric does nothing else, that's a three turn. What's that? Elvish Champion sucks, right? There's yeah, because a, of a Siege King Commander yeah, play. Yeah. So Siege King Commander can sacrifice any goblin yep. in order to deal two damage to any target. It basically turns every single goblin into like a Kindle. Um, and oh, how many different arts is Eric playing on his mountains? This is. I, I like same art in play right now, but yeah, I, I haven't there's been There's different attention. ones, I think, in a, in, in a difference. Right. I, I can actually look. So uh, a token will be flung at the Elvis Champion to take it out, and then uh, the Sharpshooter can deal some damage thanks to some, some death triggers. <laughs> but, yeah, Mike Arnold, I think he's going to be making an exit from the... Yeah, I think, I think top this, is, this is cooked. I mean, is Hurst, Hurst still in it? He beat Brian Selden last week? That's correct. <laughs> How's the second well, trigger for you? <laughs> that's and that, that's all she wrote. I, kudos to Mike Arnold for taking that one game yeah. and making it look close in I game say, three. I would say, yeah, it was the, the other game also looked super close too. So, well, it did, no, it did look close. It looked like he was going to win. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so. then goblins just—I mean, the thing is that goblins didn't even play like a spectacular game. Eric was just like, "Here's the cards that we both know are good in this matchup. Yeah, kill all your stuff." All right, we're gonna All right jump so they're down. showing what they sideboarded, Hoy. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, I'm going to jump down and we can listen into them. Out came Naturalize, out came a couple of copies. Brought of in the second squee. Uh, in came additional squee, which I guess Bounty is of the better hunts. than... You were right, Bounty of the Hunt! Before. I have unmuted the players, Flores, just so I'm listening. You know, I, I, I was like considering... Kind of talk, so. um, I was considering putting in a crypt, potentially... Uh, just to show you that to like hopefully get you to board in another squee, just to like I don't know, but I, like yeah I don't know. I don't but think it's again, too bad of a plan just to kind of core, overwhelm so with survival, right? Not necessarily. Like Masticore is definitely the plan, um, you know. But having double squee, you know, can just outgrind you at that point if we get into like a scrappy battle at all. Oh sure. Um, where there's just like a lot. Of I have double squee. If I can get double survival, turn, um, you know, sans sharpshooter. Sharpshooter is obviously the bane of my deck. But um, if you have a siege gang and then like, okay, I double um, survival and just put like two elves, you know, in front of it. If you pyrokinesis, I'm able to regain it just a little bit faster. That yeah. was kind of the plan. But obviously you just had like all the removal in the world. I was going to unmute them now. You could probably do the same. Yeah, we do have you. I was, uh, I was glad that okay. in, in our set that the birds were actually were able to do some things. Birds look spectacular that match, Jarek. <laughs> Especially the game four, just like forest birds of paradise. I didn't really do my boarding was very not interesting. <laughs> I just not, like not I'm not gonna mess, mess with your survival plan on the draw. The lackeys are pretty bad, so mm -hmm. just got good stuff. I did decide to put the the goblin king in for. The random mountain walk uh, and uh, the ability to maybe overcome your two threes if that if you gum up the board with them. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, uh, for my end, it was an absolute slaughter. I'm not sure uh, what what chat thought of it. I hope it was as entertaining, you know, for all of them. It, they were. It was certainly entertaining. Oh, do I need to? Yeah, Eric's gonna unmute us. So unmute them. Yeah. Oh, Mike, I thought it was an awesome match, right? First of all, game two was as big of a blowout in the other direction as game one was for Eric's Goblins deck. And then game yeah. three, it just looked like you were going to win. I was just like, I'm just I'm just an elves guy now. <laughs> I, <laughs> like I two, thought I would, but... Two champions? You're the champion. <laughs> yeah, once that second champion came down, I'm like, all right, now... I, I'm like, okay, I was a little bit scared of the first one because like things could go wrong with just a few cards. But then once the second one came down, I'm like, all right, this looks great. And then... Then everything kind of fell apart quickly. Yeah, then it was it, it wasn't good anymore. It, it would have been a great time for Bounty of the Hunt to show up. It yeah. never showed up in the in the tournament ever. Was, so I, was, I like I was that good I for you? That was a good card. For you. 
Oh. I, I have no data for you. It, okay. it never, it never was once. Relevant. Yeah, we, like, we played in the Swiss it. too, and that you never did play the Bounty of the Hunt. So the uh, the theory yeah. behind the Bounty of the Hunt is it a specific card you're going against? Is it just you feel like it's good against enough of the cards? What is the ideal situation for Bounty of the Hunt? So it would be something like in that situation where he cycles, you know, a Jim Palm um, right there, and I just blank it. Um, so like I was jamming a bunch of experimental stuff in this build of elves. And, you know, my, my whole theory was, well, when they zig, you zag. And so I was trying to find ways which, you know, kind of deal with a common hate that elves is experiment. It's like, well, I could play Bounty of the Hunt as a force of will. No one's expecting that. And maybe yeah. I can get some good blowouts in that direction. And I, it just never came up. Okay. So, so verdict's still out. Um, don't know. Can't tell you it's good. Can't tell you it's bad. Mike, what do you think about a Mog Fanatic? What if you just got a Mog Fanatic or more than one Mog Fanatic uh with survival and then just killed the sharpshooter before it blew up your board it's an idea i know some people have have tried that before um i know it's it's very specific you know it's really only deals with sharpshooter um doesn't deal with like too much else right there but it's um yeah you know, but I know sharpshooter is have... the unbeatable card that's the it is it's it's re and it's really problematic because it's it's played in both main deck and sideboard of like <laughs> two of the best decks so, oh so... yeah <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I I totally think it's legit, you know, way to combat it. I've just never have, and I I was doing it, you know, enough, you know, experimentation in this that I didn't want to go too far off the rails. I thought of like, you know, for going the anger pack and playing white for Armageddon, just doing something completely, you know, completely unexpected. Um, but yeah, I I don't. I think you get like a couple um, choices with your, um, you know, experimentations each each tournament you don't want to go too far down the road otherwise it just all comes off the rails and you don't really know what worked and what didn't how was the lawnmower sentinel was that guy good for you um so he was he was fine um i think i probably missed having a hermit um more than i was thankful that i um uh had the sentinels but i do they were really good i beat rifter um in the the pod rounds and I think a big reason was because it was just so hard to deal with uh, for, for Rifter. Rifter can't deal with the 2-3? Yeah, if you, if you get to that that point, it was just like, yeah, Lightning lightning Rift no longer does it. You know, they, they shrug off the slice and dice. I had to have someone, like, tap out for a, a slice and dice, and then I winter orbed him, and I just okay. recovered. Oh, tapping. nice. Yeah. Did they ever <laughs> actually slide out a Lanaro Sentinel, and then you get to go get another one? <laughs> no, no, uh, I... uh, no Astral I, I have a hard time believing that Rifter would lose to a Lane or a Sentinel, but I don't have a hard time believing that they lose to a Winter Orb after tapping out for a slice. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's very believable. <laughs> the yeah, well, was, the main deck, uh, main deck Naturalize also helped there. You know, sure. he played Humility and was like, okay, I, I you know, he, he was pretty confident that I just naturalized it and went about my day. So, did you uh, did you miss Tangle Wire though? Like, it seems to me like Tangle Wire is the main card that you've got. I yeah, I didn't run into any combo. Um, so I was lucky in that. I kind of thought people were off of combo, but of course, if I had, you know, had to be paired against uh, McLean, you know, here in the top eight, I would have definitely been missing the Tangle Wires. I played against someone on, you know, Hermit Feb uh, the other night just for testing, and it did not go my way. But um, yeah, against something like, you know, the the control decks, which um, you know have kind of been built to to fight elves, I think that Winter Orb is a is a pretty good uh, Winter Orb spectacular pretty good choice there. I, do yeah. have a I thought about making for room Eric. for it. Um, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Oh, I I thought about boarding in the the winter orb here against goblins because if you can get to the late game with goblins, it's very good against them. But as you saw, we never got to the late game really. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> uh, so Eric, uh, you had noted that the birds of paradise are good because it improves like the explosiveness of the deck. How did you arrive at only three copies of the birds of paradise? Well, it's a very new thing that I started trying. I did start with four, um, and it was basically a consequence of the mana base from the format, where I feel like I'm having to have just too many mana sources without ha without while having to make some concessions to have more green sources for a turn one bird. Um, so it just kind of felt like 24 lands with, with three was going to be better than trying to go... Uh, 28 sources that felt like a little bit too much. Okay. Then again, you know, small sample size, it could be right to do four. Um, but it does really 
unlock some exciting things. I had some really cool things happen in the Swiss um, with with the birds. So that was that was pretty been pretty happy with it so far. So you've you've been impressed with the the birds, okay? Yeah, um, you know, I've I've uh, played post uh, parallax. I've been parallax tided and played through that. Um, I think I got cataclysmed once, and I just got to keep a bird um, in a land, untap, play an ancient tomb, play a ring later, and it's like nothing even happened. Sure. Um, I've been able to get a turn two war chief, turn three, you know, whatever. Um, it, it's nice, you know, the the goblin lackey is fantastic at all, but uh, people have people are aware of it. <laughs> you need to have a little more redundancy. Yeah. Sometimes your your plan A doesn't work out, and uh, you gotta gotta be able to make things happen in other ways. Uh, the other question we had is the the duelist magazine that came out after game one. What was that? Uh, what was the conversation there? Oh, I had to I had to get my strategy. You know, I had to uh, yeah. You know, and I was wondering, you know. How Geo's cradle works with Durange Hermit, um, but fortunately, I have to worry about that interaction, so <laughs> it didn't really help me too much. Was there a Mike Flores column in that in that Duelist? There probably is. I, so I, I was writing for the Duelist <laughs> back then, so I'm just wondering if that particular one had had a Mike Flores. Column. There's a there's a very young uh, Mark Rosewater I saw, but I don't know if they're being the table of contents or something. <laughs> I yeah, mean, we were all twenty years younger. I've so. been I've been trying right. to collect the old sideboard magazines, the ones that the wizard put out. So I, I check eBay every now and then uh, and try and purchase those. So, but um, yeah, it's, it's fun to look at the the old technology that we used to have. Oh yeah, yep. I uh, my parents had thrown out my my old magazines. I had those, so I had to go back to eBay and and try to reclaim some of the ones that I lost and all that. All right. Well, I think that sums up all the questions I had and from chat. Uh, is there anything that either Eric or Mike Arnold, do you want to add before uh, we let you go? Nope. I just got to say, um, you know, good luck to, to Eric and the, the top four and, you know, hopefully the, the goblins take it down. That's right. Representing tribal. <laughs> Thank you very much. much. Appreciate it. Spectacular match. It was super fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, Eric, did thanks, you want to add Thanks for hosting anything? it. Uh, nope, appreciate it very much. Okay, well, we will see you again, Eric, uh, as you are moving on to the semifinals. So, I believe okay. you're up against Will Hurst on Sly, so we'll see how that goes. The red decks he, against each other. He has, he has like, extra goblins in his deck, so <laughs> uh, your Gem Palm Incinerator is going to be extra good. So there's going to be games where, like, you know, normally you might not be able to play something because he's just like first turn Grim Lava Mancer, but then he'll just play like some random goblin that those decks don't normally play. And then it's going to be on like popcorn. Right. Jim Palm on Jackal Pup is pretty hot. I hear. I mean, I think Jim Palm on Grim Lava Mancer so that you can play your hand out. Yeah. Yeah. I was <laughs> saying, if you have the board, I think you're probably in good position against the slide deck, yeah. but it's usually am amassing that board is, is sometimes difficult. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for streaming, Mike. Yep. Thank and, you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Guys, thanks, good All right. Thanks for having me, Hoy. Yep. All right. So just a quick wrap up. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. We had an exciting match of the the goblins versus the elves. Uh, this was the, our last quarterfinals, so we're looking for our semifinals and finals. We have to look at the scheduling. I will keep everyone informed on when we plan on having that. We want to hit, thank you, Mike Flores, for joining me in the booth. It was a blast. Uh, the energy and the insight is awesome. Um, do you want to say anything before we head out? Uh, yeah, watch my YouTube channel. Okay. <laughs> Five with floors. Five with floors. Yep. So you're putting. <laughs> there's out. no. There's no pre-modern on it now. But but uh, I, I'm gonna see if I can like steal some of my friends' playtest videos from. We've been playtesting on um, Magic Online, and then like I was gonna overdub like some of their playtesting, okay. and then you like I don't know if people follow us on Twitter or whatever, but like. Lanny Huang is so smart at magic. It's it's flabbergasting. Like, and so like, I don't say this like like I, at one point I thought it was the best like designer on earth. He's not. Sam Black is the best okay. designer. On earth. It's not. It's not close. But um, but he's so smart at magic, and it's weird. Like I learn something from him all the time when we're when we're playing. But like to watch him play test with somebody else and like listen to the interplay that they have is unbelievably insightful. Okay. And I was just like. This is whack. So, but there's no pre-modern on right now. So, unless you don't care about like Shieldred and 
I, I, like, the mirror I like modern Blaker. magic. I mean, I don't know if my my following as much does, but um, I mean, I, I like all sorts of magic. So, yeah. So that was my thing. Plug my own YouTube channel. Yeah. Five Flores. <laughs> so is is Lanny going to Lobster Con? Do you know? Yeah. Okay. We got a house. All right. So, um, or I don't know. And like Fran, I don't know how to say his last name. The used to be a modern, uh, used to be a modern streamer. Now he's a pre-modern zombie like the rest of us. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so great so yeah, it's gonna be great i'll see you there and um yeah that'll be a fun one to 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 be at and see what what new technology people come up with so yeah hopefully flint makes me play something other than i don't know like 75 basic planes I, I don't <laughs> so think 15 basic planes in your sideboard there might be some people that would do that to you flint is not one of them so yeah i just would i would just renege okay. right yeah. like yeah yeah that's <laughs> like this was not serious this yeah. is not a serious move all right. Okay. I'm going to Thanks, send everyone over to the Czech Pre-Modern Championship. They have a stream going. They are on break right now, but I think they're either just starting or going to be starting their, or in the middle of their top eight. Um, they had, I don't know how many players they had, but I think they had seven rounds of Swiss. And now Amazing. they're playing things out. So I'm going to send everyone over there. So please give them um, your attention and you can enjoy some more Pre-Modern magic. But beyond that, uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.